Thank you, Inga. I'll talk about the elements of renewable energy strategy for Jordan and the GCC. GCC for those who who uh, uh, don't know the GCC, it stands for the Gulf uh, Corporation Council. So it's uh, mainly six countries in the uh, uh, Arab countries, Saudi Arabia, Emirates, Kuwait, Oman, Bahrain, and Qatar. So those are the six countries. Uh, my presentation is, uh, will consist of three parts, but due to lime, time limitations, I'll just pass uh, quickly through some slides, but I will highlight some uh, important aspects. So, first part, it's the, I'll talk about the challenges of uh, the global energy supply, and the second part, I'll talk about the situation of the renewable energy uh, in Jordan, and then I'll move to the uh, GCC uh, countries. So, we all know that there is a continuous uh, growth in the energy uh, demand. And I always uh, say, uh, since uh, uh, year uh, uh, 1,800, the population folded six times, while the energy demand folded 20 times. So there will be always a need uh, in energy. and. Uh, we still have uh, uh, good reserves in the fossil fuels for natural gas for, uh, and uh, uh, oil and uh, coal. And why is that? Because uh, still most of the energy so far, although uh, uh, there are good progresses in the renewable energy it's supplied by fossil fuel now, 77% uh, is supplied by fossil fuel. Of course, we dream, we all uh, vision that this will end. Uh, in my opinion, this might take up to the end of the century. Maybe others are more enthusiastic that uh, this will take shorter. Uh, in Jordan, uh, we have a uh, an energy crisis. In Jordan, we import 97% of our energy needs. We don't have oil in uh, Jordan. Even this is affecting our uh, uh, economy uh, because we used to get uh, uh, natural gas from, from Egypt. Then the uh, terrorists exploded the line in Egypt because it goes also to Israel, and we faced a huge problem in the cost of energy in Jordan. And this caused Jordan to import, to switch from natural gas to uh, heavy oil and oil, and uh, this impacted the prices of elect electricity in Jordan. And even, uh, if you can imagine, 20% of uh, the GDP in Jordan goes to uh, energy. And the deficit is mainly because of uh, uh, this matter. But fortunately, uh, we had a renewable energy strategy from uh, 27 to 2020, which was updated uh, uh, later. But uh, it was uh, they, they defined some goals to reach 7% in 2015 and 10% uh, by 2020 for uh, uh, renewable uh, uh, energy. And uh, finally, in uh, uh, 2000, the end of uh, uh, 2011, uh, the government passed uh, a law to the parliament. The parliament rat ratified the law in April 2012. So I joined the uh, MBA program at the end of uh, uh, 2011, and uh, the law was introduced in April. And on the 1st of May, uh, uh, we established uh, the renewable energy and energy efficiency section in our business unit in our company. But this, uh, this law allowed for uh, connecting to the grid. It's a net metering. It's al also allowed for the utility scales, uh, projects, uh, direct proposals, and uh, PPAs. Uh, those are the uh, three schemes. 
So nanet metering, of course, uh, it's based on uh, uh, rooftops or uh, adjacent areas, and everyone knows the concept of uh, net metering. So if you have uh, uh, consumption, you consume. If you have ex export, you uh, export to the grid. The utility will bill you only with the difference. And this is what uh, the load profile would look like, uh, the consumption curve and the production uh, curve. In Jordan, actually, uh, they went a step ahead because sometimes in the commercial buildings, you don't have space. You need energy, but you don't have uh, enough rooftop space. So uh, the government also passed a new uh, regulation, it's called wheeling. Wheeling, it's basically off-site net metering. So you can install your plant elsewhere and consume it at your facility. And it will be considered as uh, net metering. Of course, uh, you get charged for the electrical losses and the grid uh, use fees. But this is a good opportunity for uh, facilities or factories that uh, uh, who don't have enough space to cover up to 100% of their consumption. And of course, uh, we have uh, the utility scale projects based on bidding and uh, direct uh, uh, proposals. These are old reference prices, but uh, now it's going all to com competitive uh, bidding in Jordan. The status in uh, up to September 2015, uh, Jordan reached uh, uh, 1,000 megawatts, uh, either constructed or under construction or under study. And up to uh, end of last year, uh, Jordan reached uh, 2,000 megawatts. So this was a good progress and uh, with these projects implemented, we, will, uh, we would reach the target set in the energy uh, strategy. But still, uh, Jordan is uh, facing a big, tremendous problem because the country became saturated. It's becoming very difficult to get approvals. So, and uh, that's why also, the government, they signed uh, an agreement to uh, establish something called the Green Corridor, which, uh, which is uh, basically an investment in uh, transmission lines and transformers for the grid to take more renewable energy. But this Green Corridor uh, will be in operation by maybe by the end of 2018 or in 2019 but it would solve partially part of the uh, problem. Uh, now switching to the uh, GCC area. This is uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Oman, Dubai, uh, Bahrain, Qatar, and uh, Kuwait. Uh, actually, so what are the drivers? What are the motives? Uh, uh, for the governments because most utilities or all utilities in uh, the GCC uh, are owned by the government. So the, uh, trans the generation, transmission, distribution, it's all governmental. So why would the governments be driven to install uh, a PV? Uh, the main thing is that the electricity is so cheap. Uh, they sell it at very low prices, and they are all subsidized, the electricity tariffs. So when uh, they install renewable energy, then uh, they would sh uh, chop down the appropriation for energy costs, and they can sell the oil or gas at the higher market price. So it's a benefit uh, for them, so they can leverage the uh, savings. Sometimes uh, you find some trends uh, for green, applying sustainability or applying uh, green concepts. 
protecting the environment or commitments, uh, uh, international commitments. So this might be also another uh, driver. This is uh, something important because all these countries, the GCC countries, have extremely hot climates. And uh, installing solar photovoltaics will, will coincide the high peak uh, generation with the high peak demand. So it will reduce the investment uh, in the generation uh, uh, units and will also support uh, giving extra stability to the grid because the temperature in uh, uh, these areas uh, can reach more than 50 degrees. <coughs> these are some targets for the UAE, Kuwait, and uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, I will not go through them, but uh, these, those countries fixed targets for uh, renewable energy. The latest target was by Saudi Arabia for uh, uh, 9.5 gigawatts by 2023. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the other driver is uh, avoiding CO2 emissions, the effects for global uh, warming, the distributed uh, generation, because these are vast areas in the GCC, so you can reduce the transmission losses. Uh, those uh, areas are resource attractive, so they have very high, very good uh, radiation uh, levels. In Kuwait, the GHI is 1,900, in Saudi Arabia and the UAE it's more than 2,100. This is on the horizontal. Uh, and uh, the GCC countries are, uh, let's say, they uh, waste energy a lot in buildings, in industries, and they have a threat that if uh, they do nothing until this moment, uh, in 2030, this is a, an article in Bloomberg, talks about Saudi Arabia, one of the biggest importer, uh, exporter of oil, will become, might become an important of oil in order to produce its own electricity because they have also high uh, electricity uh, uh, growth in the electricity from five to seven percent. Uh, now we talk about the challenges. The challenges in uh, uh, many countries it's the absence of uh, a regulatory framework uh, except maybe in Dubai they have uh, Shams Dubai uh, regulation uh, lately in uh, Saudi Arabia, they launched, uh, introduced a law for uh, rooftop projects below 2 megawatts, but it will be activated the 1st of July next month, as they say. Uh, in Kuwait, uh, net metering is not uh, allowed, but they allow you to connect to the grid for uh, self-consumption. So basically, you need to keep your generation below the uh, load. Uh, there is also a big challenge in the, the area. It's the dusty environment. And also for cleaning, uh, this area has scarcity of uh, water. And this, this is the water uh, needed to clean uh, one kilowatt peak of uh, modules, 700 liters per year. So, and all of us, we know that uh, they need energy to produce uh, water for desalination. So this is also a challenge. <coughs> but there are also some solutions in the dry cleaning and other cleaning technologies that consume less uh, uh, water. Uh, when you want to go to these areas, you might be reluctant because of the stringent rules uh, with regards to the foreign direct investment, maybe except uh, in Dubai. They have a uh, good investment uh, environment. Maybe when you think about this area, you think about the political uh, stability in the region, 
you know, it's adjacent to Syria, Iraq, Iran. <coughs> so this is a challenge as well. Uh, this will become a restraint later on, same as what happened in Jordan, the uh, grid capacity uh, limitation. But even in Jordan and the other uh, countries, the energy storage technologies uh, might be a solution, and it's becoming uh, more and more viable. <coughs> One of the biggest problems is the distorted, I, would, I call it distorted electricity tariffs in uh, the GCC. The electricity is so cheap, the, they pay extremely low for the uh, kilowatt hour consumed. This would reduce uh, feasibility and with the, will restrain the private sector from investing in <coughs> the renewable uh, energy. Sorry. Uh, so mainly, this will uh, limit the private sector investments because it will not be, be so feasible to them to invest. To give you an idea, in Kuwait, they pay two Kuwaiti fills, which is half a euro cent for a kilowatt hour. When they go on a vacation, the, uh, they really leave the air conditioning system uh, on for one month. In, uh, in uh, UAE, it's moderate. I would say it's on the uh, edge value. You can get a payback period uh, from five to seven years. The tariff is about uh, 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 12 cents, 12 dollar cents. So it's uh, good in du Dubai. In Saudi Arabia, the tariff is also uh, low. This is a summary for the tariffs from the lowest to the uh, highest tariff in Dubai from 8 to 12 cents, in Kuwait from less than 1 cent to uh, 4 cents, dollar cents even. <coughs> and in Saudi Arabia, the highest tariff is uh, 7 uh, dollar uh, cents. Uh, however, uh, the good side is that they know the, that the tariff is distorted and they are trying to uh, rectify the situation. So there are many initiatives from the governments to uh, correct the situation. So, <coughs> sorry, in Kuwait they are, they are suggesting a new tariff but this tariff was not passed by the parliament because they, uh, they are worried about the social uh, impact. But uh, they could manage to increase it a little bit from two Kuwaiti fills to three Kuwaiti fills, but still it is very low. In uh, Kuwait also, uh, yeah, we talked about Kuwait, in, uh, In Dubai, as I told you, we, they have the Shams Dubai net metering uh, regulation. In Saudi Arabia, they have the, the regulation for net metering for uh, installations below 2 megawatts. <coughs> uh, but still, it's not uh, activated. Also, it was announced the uh, vision 2030 that uh, Saudi Arabia aims to produce 9.5 gigawatts by 2023. Uh, Can uh, go to the website, just mention vision 2030 Saudi Arabia. Also the uh, Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of uh, uh, Saudi Arabia announced a prospective project called Neom on the Red Sea, which will be like a sustainable uh, city. 
And uh, in one of the declarations, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, he signed an agreement uh, uh, with SoftBank uh, uh, for implementing 200 gigawatts of project. This is, I see it too good to be true because the maximum power in uh, Saudi Arabia is 70 to 80 gigawatts. But we'll see. Of course, uh, apart from the economic uh, profitability, to conclude, uh, going towards renewable energy in uh, the GCC country, it will support the GDP, will have uh, less transmission losses, will reduce the national uh, losses, and you will have uh, a diver diversified uh, energy mix about the social uh, aspects uh, heading to renewables will create uh, job opportunities and it will spread knowledge and uh, awareness and uh, know-how uh, within the society and of course uh, the effect for the environment reducing the co2 uh, emission so really for the uh, gcc and uh, in jordan also uh, investing in renewable energy really ma makes sense and uh, if you all remember the uh, solar constant 1367 watts per meter if you uh, convert this into money so it would become 30 US dollars per square meter so it's a new source of oil for these uh, uh, countries and uh, thank you for listening and sorry for my uh, voice. I think if I would choose one ma major factor is the distorted uh, electricity tariff because if the tariff is suitable and uh, attractive for investors to save money, then the private sector will move because with this tariff only the public sector uh, will take the initiative. But in order to go massive, uh, I think uh, the private sector is needed and the private sector it's all about money if uh, if you don't save you will not invest okay you might find some companies here and there because of uh, sustainability and green image but at the end uh, savings and money is what uh, matters most Yeah, there are uh, uh, biddings for utility scale projects and uh, it is open for uh, any company, for international companies to uh, bid. Are they in English? Yeah, yeah. Easy to apply? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's how the typical is paid for a scale of 200, 300 Yeah. Oh, yeah. Parks and industrial buildings. Uh, it could be in the scale, or it could be in the low scale, or scale. Okay. Well, I would say Dubai is the most uh, organized and 
may be uh, structured for such uh, foreign investments. In Kuwait, it's very difficult. To be honest, there is a lot of uh, corruption. It's a corrupted country. In uh, Saudi Arabia, the regulations are not uh, so mature and uh, you cannot rely on the stability of regulations. So this is also a problem in uh, Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I, I agree with you regarding also there is a big potential for uh, energy efficiency in these uh, markets. But we should, when we talk to, uh, about the GCC, uh, we should exclude Dubai. Dubai is really a good model for the pro progressiveness uh, in everything. But uh, there is big room uh, for improvement in energy efficiency, in uh, regulations, in frameworks, uh, uh, in, uh, in the uh, GCC countries. I think they have to, yeah, sorry. No, as I told you, the, now 30% of the production of oil goes to generating electricity and water desalination. So the main uh, uh, benefit for the government, because the government is the generation, transmission and distribution company, and they sell uh, uh, electricity at, at very cheap prices. So instead of selling at these cheap prices, if more renewable energy is installed, then they can sell the saved oil at the higher market prices. So this is the uh, benefit. So when you calculate the saving, because you are a government, you are executing the project, you should consider the uh, actual cost of 
uh, selling price of the oil. So th this will be the saving. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.